All right, we've arrived at the promised land. Now we were here yesterday and uh, I'm an idiot. So both facts, no one's gonna argue with that. But my camera was set for workbench mode and not walking around mode. So steady shot was not active and we didn't get good results. So I did another 100 mile drive just to come back and redo everything I did yesterday. Yeah, I, stupidest hobby channel on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. We've come back for a second visit now. All right. uh, my filming failed yesterday. Oh, really? I build model kits on YouTube and I have this on a gantry pointing at the workbench. And uh, yeah, the mode I had it in didn't have steady shot enabled. <laughs> oh. And my mic sucked, so I needed the new mic. That's only 110 miles. Yeah, what is it? Yeah. What is it? So we're open for two days. We can be back. So. It is amazingly not a ma madhouse today. What's going on? Yeah, uh, I don't know. He's never really put it to home, kind of came yesterday. Well, I, now I know better. Come on the second day. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Uh, we really appreciate you guys having this open for us, though. Uh, of course, man. Cool. It's awesome to have you guys here. All us tank nerds and whoever else. Right. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'm gonna... I don't have to bang into people now, at least. Yeah, there's that. Jesus, thing's a beast. So is all the damage from combat or from Aberdeen? That's a great question. I'm not totally sure. Yeah. Because I'm sure something took it out. Right. And then... They probably shot at it a few times to figure out what would go through it, and they figured out nothing would go through it. Yeah, you think it was some damage was from Aberdeen to test it or Yeah. Uh, if one of you guys could travel back in time, be like, no, no, don't do that. All right, yeah. Don't slice it open. I actually think the sliced open ones. At first, I was just like, oh, it's horrible. They did that, and I'm like, wow, you could really see everything inside that, now. That is the benefit. Yeah. You, you kind of see what. If only they just did a little better job preserving the interior. Yeah, well, they're just outside. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like my driveway. It's like the pine trees and the, all the crap falling on them and the birds pooping on them and the sap. And, yeah, it's a shame. And, you know, 155 millimeter howitzer rounds. That doesn't happen in my driveway, luckily. Yeah. <laughs> Yet. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Of course. So, we've got a somewhat broken. Yeah, tiger here. Oh, it's a beast. So I was listening to somebody yesterday saying this thing's probably never going to drive again. They just want to get it to roll because um, it's hard to move around. I think Sofaline did a video on uh, them craning this thing in. And it's a monster. Ooh, she's a big girl. That's a big one. My camera does not have a wide enough angle. I know. It's meant for my workbench. Not necessarily filming gigantic objects with very little room. But I'll do my best. Little, little, little cleats and tie downs and buckles. Crazy treads. I don't think Tamiya makes one. No, Tamiya does not make um, a 16 scale full option of this. Man. All right, well, we're gonna go to the next tank. There we go. Back in action. I actually was walking around talking to myself, not even recording for a while. Um, but yeah, let's get through some of these things. BTR 60, a nice BMP1, of course, piece of shit, as the guys called it. They're Bradley. Uh, prototype Bradley the XM1 prototype for the Abrams if anyone wants to know what's missing it's got it's got a, a different different profile to it a bit and she's a little slicker and that's that's different that engine deck a lot no bustle rack. 
pretty slick top. Obviously the classic Army Earl Scheib spray over job. But yeah, basically very, 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 very similar. Profiles are all very similar, but uh, they don't have this parked next to a production M1 for some reason, which would be cool to see the difference side by side. We got another M60 here. M48. Uh, another little Soviet armored car. <laughs> oh, see, a ten short attention span theater, Ian. I gotta do. This is sick. Oh, yeah. Challenger 1. Very cool. Still don't know what this tank is, but I'm more interested in the Chally. The Chally is very, very cool, and luckily we have enough space here that we can get a really good shot of her. I wonder if there's a tea kettle in it, still. There's always a tea kettle. Always a tea kettle. Ooh, S-Tank. Who doesn't love the S-Tank? <laughs> uh, when you're a piece of ammunition, parking in rear. And, oh baby, she's cool. I wonder if any soldiers secretly filled one of those with like beer or something. That would have been sneaky. Got the plow over here. The anti whatever round RPGs and other things. Bar armor there in the front. Very cool. Very sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky tank. Got a couple little armored cars, including one armored car that looks like it had a baby with a Bradley. The Twister. This thing is bizarre. It's just bizarre. But it's it's armored glass uh, held up a lot better than the armored glass on that uh, active duty MRAP. I don't even know if that MRAP is active duty or not, but crazy looking thing. Crazy. Another prototype, an XM800. There's a little plaque here. Pause. You can pause and read that. XM803 prototype. Ooh. It's not the length, it's the girth. Yeah. That's a uh, 152 millimeter. I think it's the same bore size as the uh, M551. Uh, engine nerding vehicle. Uh, M42 Spag Duster. Looks like an anti-aircraft type of deal. Hey, look. Army got them an RV. M706 Commando. Well, it's got a good name. This is like the ubiquitous 80s movie SWAT vehicle that the bad guys always seem to be able to blow up. Ooh, Starship. Totally the Starship. Oh, yeah, she's a Starship. This thing is... Beautiful. Well, there's a lot of guys buying up. I forget what brand it is that's making these M60 in 16th scale RC. But uh, here's all the suspension. There's that stubby little barrel, also a 152, I think. Yes, it is. Uh, so that would be uh, firing the Shalali missile, which I've not heard good reviews on. Its Yelp score is really low for actually firing and blowing things up. Worst Yelp reviews ever. Some. There you go. If any of you guys uh, got your got yourselves one of those RC starships, this would be some nice reference material. I mean, that gigantic flood like Oh boy, who called for a tow? Mama Sita. That is a big tow truck. Let's get out of here. 
at this, get a little more detail here of this M60 Starship and its ginormous floodlight. I wonder if you could cook a pizza with that thing. I'm sure they heated up MREs on that at some point. M51 tank recovery vehicle. That thing is massive. And it's got a 50 mount on top, of course. And, ooh, we got the Antos. Check that out. Six recoilless barrels of fun. Very cool. I think uh, TACOM has a beautiful model kit of this. So it's like a, it's a rubber band with metal cleat track as opposed to straight metal links. Pretty slick. And, oh my lord. Look at this whale. That is a LVTC5 Amphibious APC. Jesus Louise, look at the size of this sucker. Holy mother, it's pretty featureless. A lot of antennas. This almost is like, this reminds me of a, of a, of a crocodile tank almost. We got inside, a little dingy in there. But, wow, there you go. We got an M103 Heavy. Um, yeah, when they say heavy, they mean heavy. Very heavy. It basically feels like solid concrete. Like, they built this, and they're like, eh, no, that's not enough. We need something better. Jeez. M67A1 flame tank. Uh, say hello to my little burning napalm friend. Yeah, we got a couple of, couple of jeeps. One with, one with a really spicy burrito coming out the back of it. Ooh, the Sheridan. Very nice. Very very nice. One of my favorite RC models I've ever built. Definitely the Sheridan. Love it. And the US uh, T114 little guy. Again, look, it's like rubber band track with metal cleats. So, seems not, not, not really that similar to the Antos. But let's keep moving, everybody. Let's keep moving. Another Russian oh, PT-78 amphibious tank, which means not a good boat and not a good tank. Mod B Patton 3. Very nice. And this is a very cool vehicle. MBT-70. Kind of the uh, bastard love child of the US and Germany trying to work together to build a tank that now neither of them wanted. Um, it is a hydro pneumatic suspension, which is why it's laying flatter on the floor than one of my bulldogs on a hot day. Very weird little creature here. Well, not little, but uh, it's hard moving around here. I got a camera slung off my other side to take regular photos when I'm done with the video. Yeah. Oof, weird, wide, very wide. And then, ooh, M51, Super Sherman, IDF, baby. This is very rusty. <laughs> If you want to overweather your tank, just tell everyone on Facebook that you're doing one from the Aberdeen Proving Grounds that sat out in the elements for years. But yeah, one of my one of my first RC tanks I ever built, and uh, still one of my favorites. It's a fantastic, fantastic vehicle. Oof, squeezy through. What is what is this thing? Uh, just. Some self-propelled gun, but that's pretty awesome. And then we got, this is, oh, this is a, yeah, a Tehran from Israel. Basically like a captured T, T60, 50, 70 something, you know, they just do whatever they want. Um, here's basically the same thing, a T62. I was pretty clear, yeah, T62 based, but, uh, you know, Israel just scrounged up whatever they could and made it their own. It's kind of like love it or list it. Let's see, chieftain one baby. 
Very, very nice. Really, like, long gun. I mean, what are the British compensating for with this one? But no. Chieftain is beautiful. Would love a nice 16th scale Chieftain. That would be very cool. What do we got here? Yeah. Leopard 1. Very nice. That rear view mirror looks pretty tacked on. That is very cool. Another post-war German. Uh, Kanonen Jagdpanzer. Okay. Looks very similar to the World War II stuff. But it's not. They've got, uh, the, they've got the less uh, controversial logos on these. This is the widest APC I think I've ever seen. M59. Why is this thing so wide? They don't have the full uh, info boards filled out yet. Uh, I'm assuming maybe next year they'll have more of them done. Um, yeah, M47 Patton 2, medium. Is she cut open? Or is... I don't know. Yeah, yeah, they sliced her open. That's cool though, you get to see all the innards. Doesn't look very comfortable in there. US T-43, heavy. She's, I gotta get back further. There we are. Let's see. Let's keep going. We're gonna move a little quicker through here. Um, T-69 prototype. This is a very cool tank. Medium tank. Uh, similar, uh, oscillating turret thing to the, uh, which French tank was that? The a AMX 103? I could be wrong. Honestly, the first time I, I glanced at this, I was like, oh, is that the AMX? No, it's not. Nope. This, this one's American. T69. Serial number three. Yeah, we have some, some rare little gems in this building. Oh, and thank you so much. This building is air-conditioned. The last time <laughs> I came down to the base. Their facility was not. Very weird. Oops, sorry. Trying to stay out of people's way here. My wife is just quietly sitting on a bench, kind of like a man, outside the dressing rooms when the wife is trying on clothes. Soviet T-54A. Uh, let's see here. Is that the, that the old bulldog probably? M46 Patton Medium. Very similar to the Pershing, actually. Different turret, of course. T3485. So, a lot of T34 fans out there. And it's Russian, so looks like some added, some added uh, welded armor. And look at that turret. I mean, if Lodge puts out a frying pan that looked like this, they would just fail it for quality control. But Russia was like, nah, that's fine. Comrade, you keep making. It's okay. She go boom, she go vroom, we use. Yes, very good. But yeah, that's basically it. And uh, let's not hit our head on the barrel. Oh, baby. Centurion. Um... Hmm. Yeah. Who doesn't love a nice Centurion? Mark V. Lovely tank. I built my Centurion kind of, sort of, uh, to look like an IDF uh, shot T or whatnot, but yeah. Very cool. Another Russian, I, oh, yeah, IS-3. Oof. You can tell it's Russian, you know, you just know. Oh, yeah, they're, they are uh, dented, dented, dented. And then that is one massive hull. Oh, this thing's got more, more weld scars than Mickey Rourke's face. 
Yeah, too much plastic surgery at Hollywood, you know, never never works out well. Very cool. Um, one of the bells of the ball is right here. Yes, the Easy 8. Now this is uh, yeah, the M4 A3 76W with HVSS. So yeah, there we go, Old Henry, 1944. Oh, I love me some HVSS suspension. Yes, I do. Very nice. The little kids. Uh, say the darndest things. Why is it his name Sherman? Oh boy. Engine deck. So this is definitely a later, um, probably Korean War uh, one due to the due to the little medical little box on the side there. And then the beefed up engine grates. So anyone getting uh, the new kit from Andy's Hobby Headquarters, here you go. There's the exhaust armor, the slat armor there on the exhaust. Ooh, so close together here. Okay. Tracks, some fresh track pads here. Here's for all the stowage. I mean, really, the more you look at this in real life, they did a really good job, Andy and 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 take out Tacom. Really good job. You know, a lot of attention to detail on that model kit. But oof, yeah. She's a tight squeeze in here, guys. Sorry about that. And you know, if anyone wants some superior rivet detail. Yep. Very cool. Very freaking cool. Uh, for people that like adding little extra weld beads and stuff. There you go. Old Henry. So this is, it says 44, but I'm pretty sure this thing would have. It looks like it's got the Korea updates to it. There's our IS-3, M782 Priest, self-propelled gun. There we go. And we got M26 Pershing, one of my favorites. The first RC tank I ever built. Very nice. And a, uh, a little scout car thing. M38 gun motor carriage. M36, jeez. Oh, correct me. M36, guys. I mean, I don't love VVSS suspension as much, but it's still, it's still sweet. I don't give it enough love. But yeah, there we go. Gun travel lock on the back. Whatever that thing is. Pretty cool. M24. The Chaffee. Very cool. Gone over the Chaffee in some of my other videos. Some more amphibious tanks, which are neither good at being boats nor tanks. But cool and cool and light. yeah, I know you see it. We'll get to it. Don't worry. The E1 E13 R1 13 R2 mechanized oh flamethrower. Oh dear. Yes, there we go. Oh no one, don't worry, don't worry, guys. It's it's only a Sherman tank. It can't harm us too bad. It's a puny gun. And then oh, you're all engulfed in flames. Yeah, that's got to be uh, a rude awakening. Oh, got a got a heavy here m4 a3 e2 sherman assault jeez she's a big girl i'm not sure but um i think so they added obviously quite a bit of armor to it is that concrete i think it i don't know yeah it feels almost i don't know is that concrete Oh, speaking of flames, 
<laughs> dying from a horrible fiery death. Yep. Mark 7, crocodile flame. Oh boy. Very cool. I mean, yeah, all the metal casting. You can't tell sometimes, but I'm pretty sure that Heavy Sherman was uh, clad in concrete. British Churchill Crocodile Flame Tank. Very nice. Very successful tank. Uh, M4A375W Sherman Medium Tank. They've got a lot of Shermans here. Whew. Let's see what we got here. M18 Hellcat. A T30 Heavy. And, uh, whew. This one, T34 Heavy. The numbers go up, the heavy gets heavier, and the guns get bigger. Monsters. Is that like a 155 in there, I think? She's. Utterly massive. Utterly massive. Now we're gonna take a very, very momentary siesta here to uh, to go uh, empty the jerry can, so to speak, at the men's room. We'll be back. I must say, for a military installation, the men's room is quite well appointed and clean. Oh, baby. What do we have here, boys? Oh, yeah. Panther 2. Okay, boys, who has a Panther 2? Panther, yeah, but a Panther 2? I don't think so. So clearly, kind of a prototype thing. Which a lot of German tanks were. If they even made it off paper. A little antenna base. Let's see what the back looks like. We're getting, we don't have a lot of room to move rearwards, but there we go. No big, uh, the covers are not around here. Panther 2. Pretty damn cool to see one of these things in person. Very awesome. Oh, we got Koenigstiger 332. Another very rare sight to see. We're gonna just do this and then get a little less glary. And everyone could just pause and read that. So we can get done quicker. It is, it is, uh, it is 2.47 p.m. and this place closes at 4. And I still have to go through this entire place all over again with my camera and take a whole bunch of good photos for the family slideshow. Now, I was initially upset when they sliced these open, like I said to the first guy here, but it's really cool to see exactly how thick that armor is. You know, human fist thick. So, very cool, awesome. All you detail nerds out there, I do my best. I left, uh, I left the extra big selfie stick with my wife. It was just too awkward to use. I could have gotten better shots up top, but uh, my arm's already sore from yesterday, from doing this and failing. It was so friggin' crowded. I mean, I can't blame them. It's cool, cool, cool. But yeah, we got here. Take kind of chin and cut away. Yep. Panzer V, OSFG, a.k.a. Panther. Very, very cool. Very cool Panther. And uh, she's cut open as well, so we can go check out the inside. Here's a little detail for like the lights and how they routed the wiring. And that thing still has what appears to be <laughs> <laughs> ball mount MG in there Very cool. I got some paint on the tires this one Very complete very rusty, but very complete Very cool as well. 
I am recording. Dear God, I just have I have to double check now. So this one wasn't nearly as as thickly armored. Yeah. What do we got here? Oh, Jagdpanzer IV. Let me back up here. Be careful when walking backwards in an armor gallery like this. You don't know what you're going to bang into. And uh, it's a little, uh, is this the Lang? Yeah. Jagdpanzer. Yeah, well, Jagdpanzer. And this is another Jagdpanzer. And we got a stern. Yep. Yep. A stew, not a stoog. Stuh. It's just stuh. I don't know what you can see. We'll find out when I uh, get the video uploaded. Well, here we are, back up. Again, be very careful. Jagdpanzer 38T. And this is the, uh, yeah, the Panzer V 70. I think this one is the Lang, isn't it? Yeah, much longer main gun, much shorter main gun. And this is a Stuh, S-T-U-H 42. I think everyone just calls it a Stug. Um, all right, I'll get, get to the queen of the show here. Look at this massive monster. The T-28, super heavy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not, uh, that's not a <laughs> inaccurate <coughs> description for this giant whale. Look at this thing. Is this, I think this might be the only one anywhere, um, period, at all. I'm pretty sure it is, but holy mother of, they made a special wheel chock to keep it from moving. I don't think keeping this from moving is a problem, but I could be wrong. And uh, all this side stuff here, this is all super, super heavily armored. I mean, I don't even have this thing moved. Look at that. Whew. She's a big girl. Rebel's Roost. I love some of the names they put on these tanks. And we're walking into, uh, walking into Sherman Alley here. So that's cool. Again, <laughs> quiz on how many of these Ian gets wrong. Let's see. Got a couple, couple more German things over there. Yeah, M4105 with the uh, the German barbecue spear. Uh, no, it was for the barbed wire and hedges and stuff. Yeah, hedges. That's it. And barbed wire. Yeah, that's all. Just M4 medium tank Sherman uh, with the uh, the bolted transmission cover, final drive, etc. Some extra welded on bits and pieces here. The uh, gratuitous extra plate under the target. Yeah, and VVSS. Woo! Oh, what do we have here? That is like a, let's see, M8 Greyhound. Oh yeah, very cool. Yeah, the World War II sort of, kind of equivalent of an M2 Bradley. Up on uh, military grade jack stands. Probably suspension's collapsed down. Uh, well, let's keep going here. This is, uh, geez, please say I'm right. Oh, M5, M5 yeah, there we go, M5A1. Very cool. Got another. Yeah, okay, there you go. I'm not gonna say the word. Who knows what YouTube will do. Yeah, M10. Nasty. And we got a, a Canadian Mark I Grizzly. There you go. Um, very cool, cast hull. Old school turret. You could tell by the road wheels and especially the drive sprocket um, that this was a Canadian built Grizzly. Oh, I've met you before, Cindy. Hello, Cindy. But yeah. Yeah, the, 
the Canucks built a bunch of these, and uh, they did a lot of fighting. It's cool. So this is a this is a grizzly. I think there's another grizzly over here. Let's go back across the aisle. So Canadian cruiser grizzly, and then uh, we'll get to you. Don't worry. And we got this one. I think this is some sort of uh, mishmash. Let's see. M4A2 with Firefly turret. So, it's the British insert number pounder here. Oh, I can't remember everything. But yeah, definitely uh, definitely grizzly running gear and definitely a Firefly turret. That's a really cool combination. Canadian Fireflies. Do they wear sweaters in the winter? And then another panther. Pan ugh, panther. Tongue tied. Um, Really, really, really old, rusty, missing a little bit of the uh, wheelage action there. Probably being, no, it's not supported by uh, supporting its own weight. Oh, don't bang your head. But this one is not cut open. And this one was sitting at Aberdeen for quite some time. So, there is a lot of corrosion damage. Clearly some of these road wheels, the torsion bars are all froze up. I don't know what position she was in to end up like that. But I'm uh, getting a text message from my wife. It's almost three o'clock. And let's see if she wants to kill me yet. Um, no, I don't want to update my phone. I met a guy who worked at the Pima, Ohio factory building the Abrams, he said, you loves these tanks plus a lot of hard work and so oh huh my wife just uh, met somebody that worked at the uh, abrams tank for uh factory in uh do not please do not touch stug original 1945 paint wow okay we're gonna wow original paint a survivor stug three os fg look at that they have this whole thing roped off because they don't even want you breathing on this sucker too close. But look at that. Original paint. There's no funny crosses to be found on this one. Sorry, modelers, if you want to do it like the Survivor, you're not going to be using those uh, graphics. Yep. There's our stug. Oh man, that is really cool. Original paint. So, <laughs> definitely highly weathered. But if somebody wants to uh, recreate the stug from Fort Benning in original paint, as it sits today in its museum-like environment, here is your reference. I will take photos of this. And then, uh, oh, Martyr to Martyr 2. There we go. Look at that. So a lot of the stuff here is obviously has been preserved, ergo repainted. Oh my god, I'm almost sick and tired of Sherman type tanks, but we're gonna get back over there. Now here's the martyr. Very cool. Still people here, but not as many as yesterday. T34, 1941. Very cool. We're going to come back. There, oh, M3 half track. Very cool. Let's get over here. Oh, I'm running out of time. It's 3 o'clock. M31 tank recovery vehicle. So, yeah. No main, no turret weaponry, but they might have filled it up. But very cool. Got oh another Sherman. Huh, big surprise there. <laughs> M4 uh, A3 early direct vision. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Direct vision ports there. Before they uh, covered them up with welded little plates of armor because they figured out that was a bit of a liability. And then the M3 light tank. We got a cutaway of a uh, M3 
75 millimeter. British M3 Grant. Everyone thinks this is gonna be Andy's next model is the Grant or the Lee. But here's a British Grant that we granted them, so to speak. Uh, riveted plate armor. Um, everyone knows what happens when something goes off really hard on one of these. The other side of the rivet goes bouncing around inside the tank like a, like a pinball machine. And uh, the crew are the targets. Not cool. Not cool. That's why we don't use riveted armor anymore. Learn that one the hard way. I could open. Uh, I'm not going to open that hatch. I don't want to push it. Oh, well. Some people just do whatever they want. M3 light. And then if that was the Lee, this should be the Grant. US M3. Medium tank. Also super cool. Let's see if we can take a peek inside. Not a whole lot going on inside of there. Oh boy, we got more after the T34. We got a Panzer, a Panzer four here, a Panzer three. Pardon me, guys. Panzer three, getting Panzer tied, tongue tied, whatever. You know what I mean. But yeah. Now this doesn't say don't touch, so this is clearly at some point been repainted. For preservation wood antenna adjustable drop down no get caught on things huh pretty cool I'm, I wonder they probably had to remake that wood thing 50 millimeter cannon on the uh, Panzer 3 oof look at that big fella yep flak 36 88 millimeter Got a skidkavis, skavis, skavis, skids. I don't even try anymore. <laughs> I've given up. Skidkavis, yes, we know. This is in nice shape. Panzer IV. Uh, I think someone forgot to put her shoes on this morning. But we'll get back to that real quick. Let's check out the skidkavis 10. Wow, very complete. Impressively complete. I'd like to figure out how to drive that thing. This is in very nice shape. A little uh, blackout headlight covers. A uh, little Africa core thing going on there. Huh. Cool. So many, so many tanks. It's amazing. Panzer IV F2. Very nice. Clearly waiting on a new set of tracks. Tiger One. Not sure which number Tiger 1 this is. But Tiger 1, indeed it is. Yes, and this one's one of the cutaway models. Oh, there's some, there's some guys hanging out at that. I'm going to look at something else while they're there. Oh. You know, I think I walked about a mile inside this museum yesterday, and now I'm doing another mile. Let's see what we got here. Italian M1441. Japanese Hago Type 95. Look at this little thing. That's pretty cool. M3 light tank. Panzer II. Looks like they put some fresh headlights on that one. Pretty cool. Very cool. Africa Core. Oh, French S35. I love this paint job. That is a cool paint job. Very cool. Those guys are still hanging at the Tiger One. They're all over that thing like, uh, like flies on poop. M1917. Oh, jeez, that scared me. This little guy. Little head in there. Just to show how small that little thing is. Creepy. And there's and there's yet smaller. M1918. Oh. 1916. White armored motor car. 
Oh, I got another freaky mannequin in there. That's a good mother right there. Don't touch anything, please. I mean, you gotta have some brass ones to go into combat in this thing. All right, give me one second. Have the wife looking at me. I've been given a bit of an ultimatum. Uh, my wife is very understanding. She came here yesterday with me. Uh, her friend was with us, so she had company, and today she's just sitting around like a bump on a log. Let's see. Well, let's go get inside that Tiger One first, real quick. Uh, yeah, but if anyone ever gets the opportunity to visit this at Fort Benning, I s highly suggest it. Strongly recommend it. So choice. Hello, Tiger. Yeah, there's another cut open. But really, well, not a whole lot going on in here. But you can see all the innards. Very cool. This place, I had no idea that they had this many pieces of German armor. I thought I had to go to Bovington, honestly. Uh, still going to go to Bovington, but I think this is a very close second. Um, other than the placards not really being filled out uh, on most things, just having a basic index card description. But uh, here's a Mark 7 based on the British designs. But I think this one's ours. But that is terrifying. Like being inside of this thing. I get this roped off because they don't want people in here. Way less terrifying than the inside of the Mark V, though. Very cool. Um, can we get around the back here? Huh. There's our Sheridan again. Yep, Mark 7, heavy tank. Cool. Um, <laughs> this is what they used for like, what was it, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, I believe. Oh, and then the real star of the show. Ooh. The one and only Mark 5 star male, I believe. Like an M7. Sorry, uh, Mark 7 and Mark 5. So you can tell, <clears throat> extremely similar. And uh, it's in pretty rough shape, missing a bunch of pieces. They might be in a restoration shop somewhere, who knows. But um, I, this is supposedly the only one in the world in just about any condition. Yeah, the Mark V Star. I think there was another star. There was a Mark V Star Star, double star. Now we got a little crowd going. <laughs> and we got uh, some type of armored vehicle there, but no marking on it. 1128, oh boy. Yep, striker, right? That is cool. Very cool. And this is uh, another Abrams prototype. They had a lot of prototypes. And this looks like, yeah, this was probably an autoloader system. A bigger gun. It's a taller tank. <coughs> they were just... I think they were throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what stuck at some point. The rear, you could tell, is still very similar. Probably the, you know, the power pack is probably not a whole lot different than production models. And there we go. And I think that's, yeah, that's just about everything. Yeah, we're back at the chally. So there we go. That's, uh... That's about it for now. Oh, we're going to do one more thing outside after this. Um, check out, I think, a Yag Panther that's in a restoration bay. That'll be cool. Uh, so we'll see you in a sec. A crowd forms around Sophie Line. Very popular, but... 
Uh, I'm really sorry, everybody. It's only 3.30, but looks like they closed the restoration bays where, uh, where the uh, Yag Panther was. At least we got to see the Yag Tiger before. But uh, that's basically it. Everybody's gone. Most of the food trucks are gone. No ice cream for me. But uh, thanks for watching. And uh, see you next time on the dumbest modeling channel on all of YouTube. Adios, everybody. We're on the way out, but I was sharing this little tidbit of info with my lovely wife. And uh, going into each garage bay here, which there are many more, more tanks, probably way clapped out, you can see the tank tracks ghosts on the concrete. It's actually pretty cool. She said I should film this, so if you don't like it, blame her. And here is where the Yag Tiger was. If you remember, it had no tracks on one side. It was just running on its road wheels. And then on this side, it had its tracks. And there she is, sleeping tight for the rest of uh, the quarter at least. Uh, when they open the place back up, uh, my wife tells me uh, quarterly. So, we'll definitely make another visit. And uh, next time I'm going to gunnery again with better camera settings. Because it was pitiful. But you'll see. I'm going to reuse that footage, but it wasn't pretty. Alright everybody, adios for real.